Hello, this is a video for the module 4 pure grade assignment. Um, I need to make a, a circuit and a program in the Raspberry Pi that when I push a button, when the button is not pressed, the LED, the LED is blinking and the LED should stay on continually when the button is pressed. So I have to make this uh, code. So <clears throat> let's see the, the code. I am using the GPIO library as we were seeing in the course. <clears throat> I'm going to make a bonus material at the end of this video showing the new library but this is the library that we cover in the class so I'm also going to use the function sleep from the time library and the thing that I'm using here is that I'm assigning the pin 38 to the variable button <clears throat> and the pin 40 to the variable LID um, this is the board numbering, it's not the GPIO numbering. That's the way that we were seeing in the course, so I stick to this way. <clears throat> and the thing is that we need to make an input channel and it's linked to the button that is linked to this, GP, to this uh, pin and we are using a pull-up uh, resistor that is built in in the GPIO so we have a reliable reading of the button state and we have a channel out in the LID that is this number 40 so <clears throat> first of all we have a forever loop never ending loop with a while loop and we have two options when the button is not pressed and when the button is pressed so not pressed not pressed means a high state because the voltage in the pin is a uh, high at this moment so when the button is not pressed the state is high and we want to turn off the pin that is the 40 that we have in this variable we have half second of delay and then we turn high we turn on the LID and again we wait half second so these four lines here are our blinking function and I have a print screen the book line to see what it's doing so if the button is not pressed that means that is pressed the opposite of not pressed is pressed so is it the switch is closed and when the switch is closed it drains the voltage to ground so the voltage is lower and we read that as a low state so when the there is this low state we want the GPIO to be on all the time no off no delays just just uh, we send this order to turn it uh, to turn it on and we have a small print statement for the booking purposes so this is the assignment and I am connected to my Raspberry Pi via SSH in my wireless LAN in my my house so I am connected by ESH so I can go here and run a Python script that is called old. This is the old 
GPIO library and the blink start the LED start blinking and when I press you can see now the the printing output that is say that is high so when I press the button the state the state is low and the LED is on all the time and when I release is go to low again. Sorry, it's going to hide again, and I can push it and release it, and it's high again, and we can see that this is the expected behavior. So, this is the basic, and now. And I'm going to go for a bonus material in this assignment. If you want to keep looking, so the, maybe you can learn a, a little more. If not, you can just go ahead and grade my assignment. So I'm going to cancel this. And the let uh, it keeps on because that was the last command that it was received and the GPIO is connected so this is another good thing I make a, a, a small script to turn off the LED so there it's off and we can go to a different code this is the GPIO Zero library. This library expects you to import explicitly the functions that you are going to use. These actually are not functions by itself. Those are uh, classes. So we are going to import from signal library the function pause. Pause here is at the end what to make this function is to make a loop for these orders and this is more convenient because we have a better understanding of what is going on and then we have uh, we are creating an object of the class button and is wired to the pin GPIO 20 that is the pin number 40 so we have another object here that is LID that is an object from the class LID and is wired to the GPIO 21 that is the pin 38 so I don't have any order so I start by blinking and you can see that it's very easy to call the function from this uh, class that is blink and start blinking so when the button is pressed it's very easy to see what is going on so I want this object to be on and when the button is released I want this object to blink and then as I said the pause function make this a loop it's very easy it's very short so uh, it's, this is because I, I was thinking that this is a good idea to use this library instead so here we go go to make a demonstration of this of the same thing and one difference from the first example to the second example is that the first example was blinking on one second and off one second uh, sorry half second and half second and now we have a blinking of one second and one second so this is a slower rate and when you press you can see that it is doing the same behavior but it takes some time to keep into the loop of blinking 
because it takes one second to go off. There is no way to change this directly because we are calling this function here without any argument. We only can call in, in this moment when released we can only call the function itself, we cannot pass any parameter. As we use it here, we were able to put between this parentheses some parameters. So we are going to see how the parameters are passed on. That is a different example. And we can see here that I am using the same functions I am commenting the orders that we have. So what I did was to take this on and make a definition when it's pushed. And I get again my debugging printout. And I have a different uh, function that is when released. So I have here the blinking pattern. So here I am saying that I want the time on half second and the time of half second. And again, my printout for the booking, the booking purposes. So here is the, the blink at the beginning because as there is no order, the LED will be off. And when pressed, it will call the function push it and when release it, it will call the function release it. And again, pause to make this loop working. So we are seeing in the camera right now, the first example, I'm going to console this. We can see that the LED is off. This is a, a, a something good because when this uh, function is interrupted, it cuts the signals or the commands to the GPIO and that is a good thing because we are in control and we have nothing open extending so I have this modified with functions that is the same it's blinking but it's blinking faster so when I press here you can see that the button is pressed and release it. And it's pressed and release it. And as it's blinking faster, you can appreciate better when I release the button that start blinking again quickly. So thanks for watching my video. I hope that you have learned things with this uh, extra material. I really learned a couple things making this assignment. Uh, I have followed some tutorials and some reading and before, but doing this assignment, I have to look for specific items that make it worth the, the making of the assignment itself, because I have been learning a little bit. Thank you again for watching.